I have any tissue, please? Sorry. sorry. I, like, I'm so sorry. Like, and I'm not in any way a victim, guys. Like, I'm not, like, trying to, like, you know, play. Like, it's just, it's real emotions and it's really it's something that happened, you know, but... I'm fine. Like I have loads of friends here. Like it's just that moment in that situation. I didn't have anyone. So Oh recording. Sweet. Okay, cool. This is my camera, right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Guys, welcome back to the Marai podcast. We have a Love Islander who, you know, I feel like we're gonna have a great, interesting conversation. And I'm looking forward to this one for sure because I don't think anybody's really expecting it. But we have Natalia guys from season eight. Hi. Hey babes. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. As I was saying beautiful outfit <laughs> you came ready face is gorgeous as well yeah. how's life been for you recently yeah it's been good just like you know working on my my business i'm building something for myself nice we're gonna be launching very soon nice um what business is this it's a secret I'm loving the promo loving the promo I'm like oh, get it out there yeah. guys but yeah just working on my business doing my own thing really just the same nothing much. Nice. Yeah, no, I wanted to obviously have this conversation with you because I feel like it's just interesting and I feel like you've spoken on it before here and there and it just appealed to me. But your journey on Love Island obviously was short. Yeah. And as frustrating as that can be, you did speak on your mental, you spoke on how it affects you and like post journey. And I think that it's interesting to have conversations with Islanders once the show has been done. A um, couple months afterwards, so there's a lot of reflection mm -hmm. on your process and time on it. Yeah. So, talk to me about your journey on Love Island. When I went in, I know I wasn't there for a very long time, but it was quite intense because I went in at a time where I feel like it was the hardest time someone could possibly go in there because everybody was already like friends and they already had like a relationship mm. built. So it was like you're basically like this black sheep coming in, try, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to like. So it's not an easy time to go in. So it's the time in there was short, but very intense. Um, it's, it wasn't easy. Um, but when I came out of it, like, it sh I think it was like ups and downs. So like there was times where it was like really good um, and exciting and like all these things. But then there was times where it's just like, oh, when you reflect back here and you think, oh, you know, it wasn't really what I hoped it would be. Or, you know, like to do like comments, like press and like hate and things like that. So that is a nice, that is like hard to to deal with. But it's just, it's crazy because I was there for such a small period of time. How much it actually affects you after, like like I said, the ups and downs. Because I think I had a bit of an impact <laughs> when I went on the show. So yeah, it was. I think the impact was that co the specific argument that you had with Eke. Yeah. Was that something that, the producers kind of pushed you to do or was it something that you just naturally just had um producers never told us to argue with each other like they don't tell you to okay, do cool. the things but like you can sort of like i feel like I, that's the storyline that i had mm. I, I, I wasn't told i need to do this but i feel like that was the storyline that was like induced towards me because if we think about it like they obviously everybody knew that I was like from the guys that was there like he was my type or, or something like that and then obviously when I got in there like I was you know it just I feel like that was my storyline somehow <laughs> they were never telling me like oh you, you need to go argue with her you need to go do this or something like that but you do get encouraged to like you know oh you know get to know the boys oh you know David is working out go get to know him mm. like just little things like that but they don't say oh you have to do it you mm. know um, but I feel like somehow it was, it was the storyline I had. So, when you when you mean ups and downs, what were the downs that you experienced post coming out of the show, and how did you deal with them? Um, so the downs, I think, is like number one is I think people expect too much from you when you go on the show. <laughs> like they expect. I don't know what they I got so many comments so many messages of people saying oh where is your big brand deal like where is your things like why aren't you, why aren't you doing as well as the other people like what so that's like it makes you think like oh that I could have had that opportunity if I had gone in sooner or something like that so that is like one of the things that like pushes you to like wonder like oh you know um and also like the hate like people ha who has like comments to say about just the hate in general that you get from going on TV. Um, so these are the, the moments where you feel a little bit low. Right. Um, and to deal with it, like I've I've been doing therapy. Like I've I love doing therapy. It's something that I I feel like it really helps. Um, not necessarily like just full of island, but in general, I feel like it's, it's something that really helps me. 
And just like, you know, being around the people that know me and love me and support me and focusing on my on my goals instead of like focusing on what it could have been because right. obviously I have no control over that. So it's just reminding myself that to take control of what I can really. So I, I feel like I, you mentioned this somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously coming into the show, you're from Brazil. Yeah. You've come into the show in UK and there's like language barriers mm. or accent barriers. Was yeah. that something that you experienced and was that something that you found difficult? Um, so I feel like, uh, some, because of the language barrier, I feel like sometimes I can be a little bit misunderstood or yeah. like, because also like my personality, my culture, my background is different. So I don't entirely, like I've been living here for a very long time, but I don't entirely get s all the English saying sometimes, or like the, sometimes the way I speak, people can receive it in a different way. Yes. So, uh, this is something that I feel like it has had an impact um the fact that the language for me sometimes the translation that is on my brain might not come out it might not sound the same way mm. um i've seen that obviously with the, the argument with Ekin when i was like oh like Ekin who but it was never about like her as a person but for me as in like oh you asked me to prove yourself or something like it was so the translation there i think it was lost and i think what people understood from it was something that it wasn't necessarily what i meant like so the language barrier is like a, it was a bit of a difficult thing as well i think that's very interesting because when you're from a different culture background and you know you're learning english which is not easy for somebody to move to the country and then you say things and they get received more in a negative way yeah. or in a more of a kind of like aggressive way and then everyone's like, wait, why do you just have this bitchy attitude or whatever? And then that plays on your mental health even yeah, more. Of course it does, because it's already like an insecurity that we have. Like you, when you speak another language, when you're moving into a country where you can't speak the language, obviously I couldn't speak any English when I moved here. I had to learn everything from scratch. So it is an insecurity that you have inside as well, that you're like, you know, you don't sound the same, you know, you're never going to be like exactly the same. So it is a little bit that like something that plays as well. in. Because I think as viewers, we don't think like that. Yeah. Like we don't think of how difficult it can be for somebody to come onto a show where their language first is not English. Yeah. It's like something completely different, like yeah. Portuguese or Spanish or, you know. Exactly. It is hard. And then like also in situations like obviously like I speak English fluent, but Portuguese is my first language. So when you are, when I am in a situation where I feel like pressured or I'm stressed, um, I struggle more to speak or I struggle more to like, you know, sometimes the accent can change around mm. if I'm more anxious, if I'm more nervous. So like in an environment like Love Island, I feel like it's, it's even harder to like not speak your first language. Um, so it is definitely something that like people have, it would be nice if people bear in mind. Yeah, and I feel like there's also a difference between guys and girls who come on to Love Island. Like you and Davide, both of your first languages are not English. Yeah. But I feel like girls get the bitchier attitude than guys yeah. when it comes to the way you speak and the accents you have and the way things can be received more negatively. I think if you're a girl, you would get more of a negative perception yeah. than a guy. Yeah. So I think that there's also, also a difference when it comes to Because when that. a girl has a little bit of attitude or something, people are straight away, oh, she's being bitchy or yeah. something like that. And it's like, is it an attitude or is it just your yeah. accent? Yeah, and then there's a guy, oh my God, that's so funny. Like, oh, 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 that's so funny. Everything he says is so funny. Everything she says, oh, what a bitch, you know? Right. Right? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I didn't think about that until now, but yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of like praising or like funny for guys, but then for girls, it's yeah. like more negative and bitchy. Yeah. So... Yeah, I just didn't think about that whole journey and how that then that plays on your mental health. Yeah, coming out exactly. of the show because you're just like you're already insecure going into a villa where everybody's language is different to yours. Yeah, and then there are times where you don't even try or mean to be negative, yeah. uh, and you know, it gets taken in a different light because yeah. of the way your accent is. And then on top of that, obviously, like I should, it's, it's editing as well. So like you know things like so you, everything plays a part of it. It's, People just have to bear in mind, I think sometimes when you watch TV, people just have to be conscious of like of the other aspects of things, of the other side of things and not necessarily just take it like as a gospel, you know, like if people see and be like, oh yeah, that's exactly how it is. Try and understand as well, like see from a different, different perspective. Yeah, I feel like we always forget that when the yeah. show is on, we just believe what we see. Yeah, but then, you just like, get like into the drama yeah. and you don't think about the like mm -hmm. other aspects of things yeah so when did you how old are you 24 24 so when did you move to london 
Um, I moved, I was 13, so 12, 11, 12 years ago. Wow. Yeah. With your parents? Um, yeah, so I moved with my, my mom and my stepdad at the time. Uh, he opened a business here, so we moved. But then they went back and I stayed alone, basically. So when did they go back? I was like 16. What? <laughs> yeah, so I was like 16. My mom went back and I, I stayed with my stepdad for a little while. Okay, so there was one of the parents that was... No, just for a little while. Just I stayed with him for like five months. And then after that, like I, I moved out because um, they weren't together anymore. And then he was getting into a new relationship and family drama. And then obviously I had the option to go back to Brazil, but I was in college and I, I just... I was in college, I was making my friends, I was, you know, trying to like, I was finally feeling like a little bit like, because when I got here, feeling absolutely uncomfortable, hating it, mm. no friends, nothing, couldn't speak the language. And then when you finally feel like, you know, oh, I have friends now, like I can speak the language. My friends in Brazil, I wasn't even in touch with them anymore. So I was like, I don't want to go back. Like, what am I going to do back in Brazil? I don't want to. So I stayed here alone. Um, I would obviously get, um, get a little bit of like family help and support and things like that. But I had to like walk and study and do my own thing for a long time. And it was hard, like it wasn't easy. But yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm quite mature for my age and like very independent as well, because I've been having to do it from a really young age. So yeah. Interesting. So you moved, you, so your mum went back to Brazil. Yeah. And how old were you when she went back to Brazil? I was 16, yeah. So how did that feel? It felt a bit weird, I'm not going to lie. It was like, oh, what am I going to do now? Um, but also, luckily, like, I had I had my boyfriend at the time who was quite, like, nice and supportive as well. So he really had my back as well when I needed him. And I obviously missed them a lot. Um, I tried to go back to Brazil when I was 18. I went through a phase where I was, like, really struggling, so I tried to go back. I was there for five months, and I just, I couldn't, so I had to come back. You I had to come back? I had to come back. I, yeah. When you said you were struggling between 16 to 18, what are you, in like, struggling with? Uh, it was more, like, emotionally, like, you know, like, having family there. Like, I feel like that's something that still, like, plays a, a little bit in my life. Like, having them, having your family around, at least, like, having one member of your family around is something important. Family is really important to me. So, like, at this time, it was really hard because I was not in the best place in my relationship and then also trying to study, trying to work, trying to do everything alone. Yeah. And then not having any of my family here. So I was like, no, I've got to go back. Like, I can't. So that's when I went back. And then, yeah, just when I was there, I realized that as much as I love my family, I don't feel at home there anymore. I feel at home here. So you were staying with your stepdad for like five, six months and then yeah. you moved away uh, from him. Yeah. Why? why did you do that because he was beginning a new relationship yeah so he started dating <laughs> some family drama brazilian people have a lot of family drama he started dating <laughs> my mom's friend and then <laughs> damn <laughs> and then the woman was a bit like mm, yeah that's not gonna work so right yeah so i was like okay well fair enough i mean it is what it is so where did you move to at the age of 16 um so when i moved i was like i think i don't know if i was 17 already when i moved alone or 16 17 but i moved in um like you know when you have like a house, house share. share yeah damn but that's so young though so i lived in a house share but um i knew actually the um, the owner of the house so it was like a it was a nice like place like tidy it was like a lot of students more like students that lived in there like university students so anyway, I was living in a in a house share for a little bit, and then yeah. Damn. Yeah. Living out at sixteen is yeah. not easy. It's rough. <laughs> it's rough as hell, man. Yeah. So it sounds like you've been very independent yeah. from a very young age. Mm. Do you think that plays into why you feel like you're not only mature, but sometimes you can like be maybe defensive here and there, or like you know you're protective of yourself? Do you can feel be. like it kind of plays it can into be. it? Can be. It can yeah. be. When you like, you have to look after, for, look out for yourself for a long time. You ha you. It can be. You know. I feel like you did that, even though you were on the show for a couple of days, from what I perceived is that, you know, it's always difficult coming in at that stage. Yeah. Because so many bonds have been formed. Yeah. And you're like standing up for yourself. My God, it's like all the way at the top. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's like whether literally. Right. And whether you feel like you're on the right or wrong for standing up for yourself, you're still going to stand up for yourself. So, and it's not easy to do that when you're in a villa. Yeah. There's so many boys and girls, relationships are formed and you just feel like you're bothering everyone. Yeah. I feel like I literally like, it was just, it was like basically like me against everyone. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, it was like that feeling that you're like, oh, you you in this alone and you gotta fight them all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's even so silly, but like, 
when I was there, like I had so many like moments that I really wanted to cry and I felt like really like like sad because it was like things weren't going the way that I hoped for. Mm. So um, I was like telling myself like, no, you're not gonna cry in front of these people. They're not your friend. You're not gonna let them see you cry. So I literally had the, um, uh, I asked to speak with a psychologist. Is this psycho therapist? therapist? Yeah. Sorry, therapist the language totally fine and then that was just i was like i need to speak with her just to do nothing just to sit there and cry i was just, just sat there for like 40 minutes cried my eyes out and i was like okay i'm fine now i could go out nice. <laughs> but yeah it's, it's hard it's intense i don't think people can realize how intense it i is. don't think people realize that yeah. they don't get how intense it is because it's of, very intense. of course it's edited for our entertainment as audience yeah. but is it entertainment if you're taking a break to cry for like nearly an hour with somebody and to come back into it like that just plays yeah. a lot and you were only in there for three days yeah but like it's just i don't know i think it's just honestly this is what i tell like people like i'm not saying like love island is a bad thing like i'm not saying right. that but i would not recommend it going as late as i went i feel like that's i feel like that's a little it's not it's not nice it's not cool unless like let's say for example you are I don't know, a girl and you can see exactly there is this one guy who is single and you know you're going to go for him. <laughs> Which, and I, otherwise? I, otherwise, is there is like, honestly, knowing what I know now and experience what I experience now, I wouldn't tell people like, oh yeah, go on the show this late. I wouldn't say to people, I like, don't go on the show. Don't get me wrong, if I'm single and I'm, I had the chance, I would if I was told to go in the beginning, I would go again because you you make friends. Mm. You make friends. The people cried in the, in the show, but they cried to their friends. You know, they cried to whoever they were dating. So it's, it's, it's all right. But when you just, when you don't have anyone there, that's when it's hard. That's when it's yeah. difficult. And I feel like that might have been your journey where you didn't have any close people when you went in there. I couldn't. I didn't have time to make friends. Like, and straight away, like, as soon as I walked in, let's be, none of, no one was interested in making friends. Like, all the girls, they, they were friends with each other. They weren't going to be friends with the girl who's trying to come and get another guy's, one of their the, the friend's guys, you yeah. know, it's, it's never gonna happen. It's impossible to make friends at this stage. It's like territorial. Yeah, territorial, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know about it. Like, as soon as you go in the villa, you can just tell that everyone's like. You can just tell, honestly. The second I walked in, I think I made the stupid com, this most stupid comment. Are you guys happy to have us here? <laughs> They were not happy, I can tell you that now. Right, <laughs> yeah. because they're, like, they're just like, well, you're here to obviously take they're away like, mm, my partner. This person. Yeah, I mean, I get it as well. Like, you know, they obviously, like, they've been bonding with that person. They have feelings for them. So they're obviously going to look out for themselves as well. They're not going to think, oh, poor girl, you know. But it is what it is. So. When you said you were crying with the therapist, what were you crying about? Was it just the intensity about uh, the Yeah, job? I just cried because... Um, well, because I felt like, yeah, because I felt like it was like I told you, it was like me against everyone else because I felt like I was like this, not part of it or whatever it was there, I wasn't part of it. And this is so stupid, but like this is why my favorite moment that I was in Love Island is when we did um, Sports Day because, sorry, I'm getting like, I'm such an emotional man. No, it's fine. Because we did um, Sports Day and like we were playing as a team. So I like finally felt like I was part right. of something and that was like my favorite moment in there. But yeah, I just keep crying. I need to stop. But yeah, I think that's the reason because I felt like I wasn't part of it. Yeah, and that can be really hard to feel like you're getting me emotional. It's like, it's, I'm also a very emotional person. And I went, but I feel like that's really difficult because you're you're there and it feels like you're so alone. You don't have people around you. It's and then hard. when you have those moments where you feel like... Like I was part of the group. It was really nice. Like it was a good feeling. I you, think it was my best memory. Do we have any tissue, please? Sorry. sorry. I like, I'm so sorry. Like, and I'm not in any way a victim, guys. Like I'm not like trying to like, you know, like, like it's just it's real emotions and it's really it's something that happened you know but i'm fine like i have loads of friends here like it's just that moment in that situation i didn't have anyone so that's why yeah that's it was hard let's just bring some tissue amazing thank you <laughs> no worries no worries hmm. so it was like i felt like i was part of something you know so that was the my favorite part of the show i like being on the show yeah because it's just you feel like you're really cherishing the moments where you're actually like yeah together there's like a union no, mascara is much no no you're fine actually you're very really fine can't be looking ugly there's no there's no there's actually nothing coming down 
But like you feel like you're together. There's a union. Yeah, like if because you know you see this all the time. People go like, oh yeah, they become friends from Love Island. It's like whatever. But like when you go, when I went in there, I was obviously I couldn't experience that. So like when I had that moment where I was like, I remember it was like, I think it was like Luke on my team. Even Paige was on my team and like everyone was just walking together to like play against the other team. And after there was like a little bit of a, uh, we were, as we won, we were like not talking to the other team that lost, like joking around and things like that. And I just felt like I was, oh, well, I'm welcome though. I'm part of something, you know? So that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's really difficult yeah. because when I look at scenes of you in there and then, you know, you are, in my mind, I was just like, when you're initially watching it, you're just like, why is this girl so like, <laughs> so bitchy, so bitchy, so up herself. And she's just like, you know, bird's eye view of the situation. Like, you know, you're going through a lot, you're in there on your own, you know, you're going to get defensive yeah. or you're going to protect yourself as well. You don't yeah. feel like you belong as well. Mm -hmm. So anybody in that position would probably feel like that. Yeah, it was either that or I would like, this is like, I'm not the kind of person who backs down easily. So it was either I'm going to stand up for myself and like match the same energy you're giving me or I'm going to sit down on the corner and cry. And I didn't come here to sit down in the corner and cry. Like I'm already going through a lot. I'm not, if I do that when I get home, mm. I'm not, I either had two options. I would sit on the side there and do nothing and be like, yeah, yeah I'm so sorry, mum. Or I'll be like, no, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of like me more. Like I'll just match the same energy I'm yeah. being given to be honest. And it's going to be amplified when you already feel like you're on your own. Yeah, 100%. Especially if you're somebody who's defensive or protective, you're going to do that. Yeah. So that is what I feel like people don't realize when you come in there late, you don't have connections, you're more defensive, people are more territorial yeah. and you're going to feel a type of way about it and that's going to play on your mental. Yeah, 100%. And then you have to try and break up relationships, which is going to be impossible anyways. Yeah. And it's just like, what? what chess move do I play for my position in the show? And like what I've heard a lot from people is like, why would you just, why did you just still go then? Why did you just still go? Mm. Because it was months of my life that I had to do so many interviews. I had to do so many things. I was already in Spain, like I said, you know, like thinking I was going to go three weeks and a half before. You're already there. You're doing all of that. And then you don't have your family. You don't have your friends. You don't have nothing. You don't have your phone for 10 days. You're just quarantining. Don't get me wrong, lovely villa, but you're just there. What are you gonna do? Go home. Mm. Like, it's no point. You might as well go in and see what happens, you know? Honestly. Yeah, because it's like give or take, because you didn't yeah. know what, when you were gonna be yeah. on the show. And like, you know, people go in the show for love, but you also go in there for the benefits as well that it gives you. Like, there's like a back and forth for how Whoever it Whoever says they only go in there purely 100% just for love is a lie because any boy in there and any girl in there especially boys i'm sure if you want a girlfriend you can find it not on love island you know but it is like the main thing because obviously you get the chance to just meet someone who is in the same mindset and like you spend loads of time with them that's so it's the main goal is to find love but obviously people do have in the back of their mind that it comes with other benefits such as even friendship as well that people make or like you know walk or whatever so it's, nobody goes there a hundred percent just for love yeah, no, I think you're definitely right. But I just think it's interesting to look at Islanders who go on these shows or any reality show and also look at the backstory that everybody has as well. Because I think it definitely relates to, and to hear that you were 16 on your own is yeah. insane to me. Like that's just, that's crazy. You're not even from this country. And it's like, how do you maneuver? And it's so easy for you to sink uh, as well. And I feel like that in itself is, to me, more interesting than your story on Love Island, to be honest with you, because it's, there's more depth to you than what we see on a 40 minute show so it's just so interesting to hear stories like that because i had no idea because i thought you came with your family everything was good bought a house you grew up with siblings and whatever and you know that's just how but like it's not that easy for people who move countries like i really sympathize empathize with that so how you overcame that was incredible so i just had to let you know that thank you like that was great you're only 24 as well so you're still young so that's really really incredible i tried to take again playing on that trying to be strong and stuff even like the whole thing with like the double pie and stuff i tried to make a joke out of it i was like i don't even care i'm gonna have fun but obviously deep down nobody's like loving it oh yeah, yeah great yeah you know, two boys said no to me in a row nobody's gonna be like yeah that's the time of that's what i came here for you know mm. um so yeah i did feel the same emotions but i think at the time you don't have the time to process mm. the emotions you're, you're doing this you're doing that you're that's what it is you have no time to process your emotions you actually don't understand what you're feeling when you're in there because you don't get a chance to actually like process. That's it. what it is. You don't have time to. Pr That's also another reason why I like interviewing Islanders after because it's like you can't process your emotions even the day you get out yeah. and whatever. You have to look back on it, sleep on it, mm -hmm. think about it, regrets and likes and not. 
even like I'm thinking now the hard I think also the hardest part of me in there was when I had to do when we had to go do the ch- a challenge that it was a like a couple's challenge a boy would choose a girl right I think everybody knows no no guy was gonna choose me because they all had their their own girl that they were like trying to get to know and I was like the fact that I have to stand here doing absolutely nothing like I felt that moment it was really hard for me as well because I was like I know none of the guys are gonna come to me because they all have the the person mm. and obviously Reese and uh, Jamie they were both trying to get to know the Nika so they went to get us I was like why do I have to stand here so that was like another moment that was really hard as well I just remembered it now, but you're, you're right. I think it's after you leave, you can process and you can see the moments that were like good and the moments that were bad. Because when you're in there, you, you can't actually process anything. Yeah, and I don't think as a viewer, we even process it. We're just like, oh, you were here for three days, bye. But then it's like, you came in alone. Uh, it's difficult, you know, for you to get double pied. Also difficult with arguments may ha- you may have. And then, yeah. uh, you know, challenges, you feel alone, nobody's going to pick you. Yeah. And it's like everything chips away at your mental. And then, of course, you're going to the therapist and you're getting emotional. And it's just interesting. It will be also be interesting for us as viewers to see that. I know you don't want that to be seen, but or to have an idea that that was happening so that we can have more of an understanding of people's journey. Yeah, 100 percent. But I just feel like when like when I was in there, like I said, if I were to like sit down or like back down or not not match the same energy I was given or like start complaining about what was happening, that wouldn't I don't think that would have been shown anyway, Mm. because I don't think at that stage in producers is about to like show someone being upset on the corner true 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 uh, at that time th- they want to show is interesting drama things nobody would have seen that side anyway because there was a moment where i did cry like two tears or three i don't know a little bit when i at the end on the na- last night before the dumping i knew i was gonna go home anyway and i was so happy for that because i was ready to leave but i was talking to Danika. it was even like in sue um, the Nikkei I can sue in India and we spoke about some things like to do with like uh, relationships and like a little bit of my journey and, and I I think I cried a little bit and that wasn't shown because nobody wanted to see that at that time. I, I would love to see stuff like, not love to see it, but it's just interesting because it humanizes yeah. people who go on reality TV show. It, yeah. like, and drama entertainment is what we need, but also I feel like the depth and emotion and yeah. humanization, I feel like it's also very interesting because we all make conclusions of people and we don't even know them. Yeah. And it's so easy for us to make those conclusions, but then when you meet somebody in person, yeah. it's always going to be different. Yeah. And that is how it should only be. And so we're so used to that, not just on Love Island, but social media, TV yeah. shows. And it's just like, if you speak to somebody, actually have a conversation with them. Completely different perspective. Completely. It's mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. So that's why I feel like it's good to have those type of conversations. Yeah, no, I agree. 100% you're right. Also helps with like, even like the hate or whatever. Because if people can understand people better, they are more likely to like sympathize and less likely to attack them. So Right. There is no empathy in, in the social media game. There is yeah. no sympathy. In so people just like... They just roast. They just, they just like go for the jugular and just go for you. And it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. But thanks for coming on. No, no worries. Thank you for having me. I appreciate me. it. This was a heavy conversation. <laughs> like this was a lot. Oh my God. I'm such an emotional person. But yeah, no, crazy. like, I mean, I feel like it was a difficult journey and I feel like you've been through trials, but you've overcame them all. Yeah. So I feel like, and it's not easy this life. So yeah. just keep going um, in this beautiful outfit. Like, I think I've in, heard that about 10 times. I no, really hope nice. you mean it. No, I like the little... <laughs> the little things but thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it check out the podcast guys everything is in the link below as well natalia thank you for gracing me with your presence and we'll catch you guys soon for another podcast thank you sweet thank you (laughs) that was easy nice and